you are most welcome ladies and gentlemen to real impartation moment on tuesday night anatomy with daniel Oper. today's section i begin a new dimension regarding the concepts in human gross anatomy my friends this time around i'm taking you through stepwise bit by bit regarding the neurovasculature okay of all those blood vessels and of course the important nerves that we have in the human body but my friends today i tackle an important blood vessel in the human body that is that guy we call the subclavian artery and then which continues in the azari region as the azari artery now before i delve in and show you all those branches coming out of these important arteries the first thing i want you to appreciate is to talk about the aorta okay now one thing that we know about the aorta okay is that we know that it's going to have an ascending part it's going to have an arch and it's going to have a descending portion of this aorta so briefly just to talk about it so that i'll introduce you to the i mean the what you call the subclavian artery so quickly this is what we are talking about if i should scan this one for you Okay, so let's say from what we call the from what we call the left ventricle, okay, the vestibule of what we call the left ventricle, we will see that of the ascending aorta coming out, and we know that it's going to give off these important branches. And what are these branches? Of course, from the ascending aorta itself, we will have what we call the right. The right coronary artery. And then, of course, this one toward the left side, we get what we call the left coronary artery. Now, those of you who haven't you know, watched the video regarding you know, the coronary artery, uh, okay, video that I've done by way of the branches and also the I mean the tributaries of the coronary sinus by way of the venous drainage kindly get the video and of course watch it but importantly as far as this video is concerned the first thing i want you to know is that i'm interested in the arch of aorta and this arch of aorta will give us the bcs branches sometimes we can also call the bsc branch but i prefer that we call it bcs branches you know from right to left okay so that's what we are going to see let's say from here i'm going to have this artery then i'll have another one over here okay then as i go to my extreme left side i'm going to have this artery okay so if i call them bcs there's b and then there's a c and there's an s you know a b c b c s so the b over here is something that we call it the brachial cephalic trunk now usually in anatomy when you, when you talk, talk about trunk usually it's a short it's that kind of short as this, which we eventually divide okay so we have this brachial cephalic trunk over here now my friends quickly this brachial cephalic trunk because i told you it's a trunk so as this immediately divides and then when it divides okay Let me call this one one and then let me call this one two. So what are the two branches from this brachial cephalic trunk? Yes, my friends, you know that number one, okay, is towards you know the clavicular area. Okay, so that this guy we call the subclavian artery. So number one here is called the subclavian artery. But precisely. Because it belongs to the right side, we are interested in saying that it's the right subclavian artery, right subclavian artery. And then the number two, okay, is going towards the head region. Okay, we are talking about the common car common carotid artery. 
Yes, my friends, it also belongs to the right side of the right common current battery. Now, sometimes your exam laterality becomes very important. Yes, yes, not always, but especially for these arteries where we have some kind of vast differentiation regarding the origin. Okay, so one thing that we've seen is that one of the arteries that we're talking about is the subclavian artery. Now, this one belongs to the right side. So we need to specifically tell us that it's, it is the right subclavian artery. Otherwise, you don't score. Okay, that is one thing we see. Now, if I go to this C, BCS branches, we are talking about the C, BCS, the C. Okay, it's a counterpart of this one. Okay, very close to the midline. Okay, it's a counterpart of this one. If this one is the right common current artery, then this one becomes the left common current artery. Left common carotid. Artery. Okay, left common current artery. Okay, so it means that this left common current artery, okay, is a direct branch from the arch of the ureter. While the right common current artery is a branch coming from the brachiocephalic trunk, which is also a branch of this arch of the ureter. And then, of course, if you go to the S, the BCS branch, this S, okay, towards my extreme left, I also have the left. Okay, this time around, subclavian, subclavian artery. Left subclavian artery. Now, the important thing over here, which I want you to know, is that because of something you call anatomic variation, sometimes something can happen. On this arch of the aorta, instead of having three main branches, by way of the BCS branches, you may be having just two branches. Yes, that one can happen. And why, why am I saying so? In such a situation, that's what you are going to likely see. Usually, you will see the left subclavian artery that will be present. Left subclavian artery will be present, but you don't have the left common current artery. Why? Because the left common current artery. Together, okay. So now that's what we are going to see. We will get this one if it has the left subclavian, no problem. Then the left and then the right common current arteries, both of them will be arising from this brachial valley trunk. This is an atomic variation which I want you to appreciate. But my friends, today's meeting mainly we are talking about the subclavian artery. So let's, I mean, just delve into that one quickly. So we begin with the subclavian artery, subclavian. Now remember that we saw that we have the left subclavian artery or for the right subclavian artery. So by way of origin, they are different. So if I ask you the origin of the left subclavian artery, you tell me it's from the arch of aorta. Okay, which of course, then we are talking about coming from, of course, the superior medial spine, but coming from the neck region, okay, which not in the superior medial spine will be a branch of this brachial spallic trunk that becomes your right subclavian artery. So by your origin, they are extremely different, okay? Now, having seen that, then the next thing that we are going to do, I'm just going to use a diagram simply to go through this one with you so that I don't need to spend a lot of time on this. So just by way of schematically showing us what this, I mean, subclavian action, which then I will continue to look at that of the, I mean, the, that of the ancillary artery. Now let's just take it that I have this artery over here. Let's say I have an artery.
Now, in the neck region, okay, there is a muscle, okay, which eventually comes and inserts on what we call the Let me make it, it's running into it. And this one, I'm interested in the first rib, okay? So assuming I have my first rib over here. Let me make it this way. And eventually we have a costal cartilage around over here. Now this muscle is what we call the scalenos anterior muscle. Okay, now remember that deep to this I mean artery, there will be another muscle over there, which we call as scalenos medius muscle. So I want you to appreciate this, that we have been posterior to that we have scalenos posterior muscle. Okay, so I'm interested in the anterior scalene muscle, which are called scalenos anterior muscle. Now it is set on something called scalene tubercle on what we call the first rib. It is set on something called scalene tubercle on the first rib. So I'm talking about the first, this is the first rib, rib number one. And then the scalenos anterior muscle for this reason. Now, what thing is that if I look at the extent of the subclavian artery, by way of the origin, as I told you, if the left subclavian artery, directly from the arch of aorta, if it's the right subclavian artery, then it's coming from the brachial valley trunk. Eventually, then where does it end? My friends, it ends at the level of the outer border of the first rib. Now, this is the inner border. I'm talking about the outer border of the first rib. Why? Because beyond the outer border of the first rib, beyond that, which I'll come to, the name will change to become axillary artery. So from here, its origin to this point, the outer border of the first rib. That is the extent of this uh, subclavian artery. Now, for this reason, this subclavian artery will have what we call three parts of the subclavian artery. We have the first part, which is medial. Okay, now if this toward the midline, this is medial portion. As I come toward this way, I'm going laterally. That's why I talk about outer border, lateral border of the first rib. Okay, so what we say is that we're going to have the first part of the subclavian artery. We have the second part. The first part, it means that the first part is from the origin to, of course, this medial border of the sclenos anterior muscle. And then the second part will be that part which is deep to the sclenos anterior muscle itself. Of course, you can also see from the I mean, medial border to, of course, the lateral border of the sclenos anterior muscle. And then from there, the third part will be from the lateral border of the sclenos anterior muscle to the outer border of the first rib. That's what we see. So then, what are these branches that we are going to look at? Let me just clean this area to get the space. Now, the branches from the first part now, simply if you want to understand the branches for all of them, then there's a simple mnemonic which can help us, and that is something we call the vitamin. Okay, let's just say vitamin. Now, I'm just making it this way. Okay, let me just see in vitamin, vitamin C, D, and that's all. I need vitamin C. Now remember that the A, M, I, N is in small letters. So the key words, the key letters are being are in the capital letters. Okay? Now, so let's see. The first one is actually something called vertebral artery. Okay, so from the upper portion over here, we see an artery ascending upwards, running towards the middle aspect, going upwards. Okay, go, running toward what we call the upper six cervical, transverse pyramid of the upper six cervical vertebrae. Now, one thing that we know about the cervical vertebrae is that typically they will have foramina transversarium. 
okay, transverse foramina. And the, those transverse foramina, they are not just there for, you know, just the creating the, I mean, survival habits. They are there to provide passage for this artery, which are calling it the vertebral artery. Okay, so this one that we find over here is my V. My V over here. And this V as an artery is my vertebral. Vertebral artery. Now remember that we also have another one on the other side, left and right vertebral arteries. Now this vertebral artery, I will take my time and do a real video on it because one of the branches, okay, when it gets to the cranial portion of what we call the middle of Rungata, they will fuse to form something we call the basilar artery. Basilar, the base of the brain, okay, it will form the best basilar artery. Okay, and this basilar artery will be important in contributing to something we call circle of willing. Okay, circle of willing. We are going to look at that one. So that's the vertebral artery. Well, it also gives some kind of other branches like that of the anterior spinal arteries to give those branches. And then importantly, it gives a branch we call pica, posterior inferior cerebral artery. I'll take my time and run through that one with you. Okay, by of the vertebral artery. But remember that it is running through the transverse foramina of the upper six cervical vertebrae. And not, I mean, you know the cervical vertebrae have seven of them. But why is it that you're going through the upper six? It doesn't go through that of the seven. The reason is that the seventh one doesn't have transverse foramen. And my friends, even if it has, it is so small that it will not allow this, trans, uh, this vertebral artery to run through it. And that's why it doesn't run through it. Now, apart from that, there's another artery, and this artery is the eye. So when I come from vertebral artery, I go to eye. And my friends, eye is internal thoracic artery. Internal. So, internal thoracic artery. Now, internal thoracic artery, because it's related to the mammary gland region, you may also call it internal mammary artery. Mammary. So that's what we are going to have, it's going downwards, so if, if you see, it will be going downwards. Okay, it initially comes down, it runs medially, and it will be running in this manner. So this is the guy we are talking about, internal mammary artery, internal mammary artery. Okay, so then the question is, this internal mammary artery, what are the branches? Now already, I've done video regarding this internal mammary artery when I treated a topic on the intercostal neurovasculature. I've talked about these things. But yes, by way of recap, what are the things that we said? We said that this internal mammary artery will give branches to supply the first six anterior intercostal spaces. So with the first six anterior intercostal arteries, will be arising from this internal thoracic or internal mammary artery. That's number one. Just by way of recap. Number two, yes, as it runs over there, it gives off some kind of mediastinal branches. Yes, to supply, for instance, the remains of the thymus. Okay, mediastinal branches will be given. Then I also told you one branch. That branch which always runs with the phrenic nerve, something you call pericardiacophrenic artery. Pericardiacophrenic. Now, sometimes you may not see pericardiacophrenic, we may simply call it pericardiophrenic artery. That one is also there. So I want you to appreciate that one also. But not only that, now in the anterior aspect, the anterior intercostal spaces, I told you that we are nine. Of course, we said there will be 11, but the anterior, they are nine. So I've told you that the first six anterior intercostal arteries will be arising as branches of this internal mammary or internal thoracic artery. Then how about the next three? The caudal three branches by way of the anterior intercostal arteries will not be coming from this internal thoracic artery, but rather they will be coming as a branch of this internal thoracic artery. And what branch are we talking about? The musculophrenic artery. So another branch of this internal thoracic artery is the musculophrenic artery. And this musculophrenic artery goes on to give the caudal tray branches, okay? So seven, eight, and ninth anterior intercostal arteries will become from the musculophrenic artery, which is a branch 
of this internal thoracic artery or internal mammary artery. I want you to appreciate that. And not only that, that's not the only terminal branch of this internal thoracic artery. This internal thoracic artery also gives off a branch. And my friends, you know that branch, it goes downwards, okay, goes beyond this thoracic cavity and it enters the abdominal cavity. And you know that guy, by running through the, I mean, the, uh, what we call the foramen of Morgani. You remember the wisdom, foramen of Morgani. And that is the artery, we will call it the superior epigastric artery. So we've talked about these things, okay? So kindly get a video, if you've not watched that one, regarding the, I mean, intercostal neurovasculature, you would understand these things I'm talking about over right here. So that is the, I mean, the internal mammary artery or the internal thoracic artery. Now, running opposite to the point of origin of this internal thoracic artery will be another artery, so opposite to it, okay? Now you see vertebral artery, you see the internal thoracic artery, run opposite to it. Is this guy I'm interested in the T? Okay, the T that I'm talking about. And my friends, this T is the thyroid. Okay, I want you to know about it. Thyro cervical. Thyro cervical. The name is thyro cervical trunk. Now remember, I've said VIT, vitamin, VIT. So it's just running opposite to it. Okay, so we have that one over here. Remember, it's a trunk, so it will be a bit shorter. Okay, this is the guy I have over here. So this is my T. And this T over here is a thyro cervical trunk. Thyro cervical trunk. Okay, thyro cervical trunk. Okay, so that is what we see. Now, because it is a thyro cervical trunk, I want you to understand. Remember, whenever I say trunk, it's going to give us some major, you know, branches. And what are these branches that we are talking about? It will give STI branches. You know STI? Sexually transmitted infections. So this thyro cervical trunk, what I want you to know is that it will give STI branches. STI. STI branches. Okay, and what are these STI branches we are talking about? Now, the first one it gives, okay, will run above what we call the scapula, okay? So around where we have the scapula, okay, to run above it. And so we call it suprascapula, suprascapula. Actually, now there are so many videos that I've done, okay, where I explain to you that this suprascapular artery, for instance, when it comes out, it will be running through this area, okay. You know, we've we looked at that on the scapula, you see that there is a notch over here, which you call the suprascapular notch over here in the living. This suprascapular notch will break by a membrane, which you call a suprascapular ligament or transverse scapular ligament in the living. So there's a link bringing this area. And my friend, this suprascapular artery will not be running in the foramen created over here. I told you that rather suprascapular nerve will run over here, but the artery will run above, A4 above. So the suprascapular artery will run above the transverse scapular ligament over here, and it will run over here, come and supply this muscle that you know about it, the suppressed spinal twist muscle, and it doesn't end there. It will even come downwards this way to come and supply the infraspinal twist muscle. And the channel, there's also another notch over here, something called spinal glenoidal notch. It will come over here and then supply this one. Okay, so that is the, I mean, the suppressed capillar artery we are talking about over here. And then there's a T. Now the T is running around where we have the neck, so it goes a bit upwards. Okay, where we have the neck, and it's running more or less transversely. That is why this artery will be called transverse cervical artery. Transverse cervical artery. Transverse cervical artery. Now, anything cervical, I've told you, has to do with the neck. And because this artery is running transversely, transverse cervical artery. 
And then there's one more artery. Now remember, this artery is going towards where we have the thyroid gland. Okay, so this artery will be running towards where we have the thyroid gland. Okay, and because of that, this one is from below, we call it inferior, inferior thyroid artery, inferior thyroid artery, inferior thyroid artery. Now, I want to tell you something. This transverse cervical artery, yes, let me come there again. This transverse cervical artery, it even gives two branches, one is superficial and one is deep. So let me just try and then put these marks over there. Now this one, I told you the suprascapular artery, my S, then, so that's the S over here. This T is the transverse cervical artery. Then I also have the inferior thyroid artery. Okay, that's what we see. Now, this transverse cervical artery even gives all two branches. One of them is the superficial branch, and I also have the deep branch. Now, I want you to know about this. Now, whenever you talk about the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery, it is also called dorsal scapular artery. Yes, I want you to know that. Dorsal scapular artery. So, whenever I say the deep branch of transverse cervical artery, it is otherwise known as dorsal scapular artery. So, I want you to know about that one. So, Yes, the deep branch is D. So remember it's D. So it's the same as dorsal scapular artery. Dorsal scapular artery. Okay, I want you to appreciate this. Deep branch is D. Dorsal scapular artery begins with D. Now the name is dorsal scapular artery because at the end of the day it goes a bit dorsally to the scapula. But the medial border of the scapula. Now, whenever we say dorsal, we are talking about posterior, but it runs along what we call the medial border of the scapula. So that's how it runs. And it also contributes to the rich arterial anastomosis of the scapula. Now I'll treat that one too with you. I have a video on it again. You can go and watch it. But I also draw to explain this concept for you again. Okay, that is one thing I want you to become aware. Now, keep an eye on this transverse cervical artery having superficial and deep branches. I'll come to it again. There's another catch over there, which I'll come to. Now, so, this inferior thyroid artery, okay, as it goes towards the thyroid gland, what happens is that it also gives off some kind of other branches. It gives something we call ascendant cervical. It's still going upwards in the neck region. So we call it ascendant cervical artery. Okay? Then it also gives a branch, which you call it inferior laryngeal artery. Inferior, you know the larynx is over there. Also, the voice voice is over there. So it also gives not only the inferior thyroid artery, it gives ascendant cervical, inferior, you know, laryngeal artery. Yes, it may also give off some pharyngeal branches you know, some postphagial branches also, and even some tracheal branches will also be given. So I want you to appreciate that one. But mainly, it is giving us this, uh, this ascendant cervical going upwards towards the neck region, ascendant cervical. Then it is also giving us this inferior laryngeal artery. I want you to appreciate that, that one. So these are the branches coming from the first part of this subclavian artery, the vet branches from vitamin. And what vitamin are you talking about? We are talking about vitamin C, D. And so this C is that branch, what you call it, the costal cervical trunk. And I want you to know about that one. C is nothing but costal cervical trunk. It's also a trunk, okay? And that one will be coming deep, okay, deep to this. So maybe it's coming from here, like this. Coming from this, I mean, the second part, that's the deep part. Okay, deep to what you call the scalenous anterior muscle. Okay, so this one is our C. This is our vitamin C. Okay, which are called it costal cervical trunk. Now remember that I've told you whenever there's a trunk, it's going to quickly divide. It's short. So it's going to divide giving us what? Let me just put that one over here. It's giving us two branches. Now the one of them is still a cervical branch, but it goes deeper into the neck. 
And that was why we call it deep cervical branch. Deep cervical. Now, already I've told you that the second part is coming deep to a muscle, skeletal anterior muscle. And that's why that muscle, that branch that is giving the neck region, also go deep. And so we call it deep cervical you know, artery or deep cervical branch. Okay? That's one thing I want you to know. My friends, it doesn't end there. It has given a branch deep in the neck region. It also gives off a branch. And my friends, this time around, it supplies what we call the posterior intercostal space. The first two posterior intercostal space will be supplied by it. Now remember, there's something, these videos, I treated something, some part of this one, when I treated the intermuscular neuro, sorry, intercostal neurovasculature. Okay, it's something I've treated it. And I told you that we have 11 posterior intercostal spaces. So it means that we are supposed to have 11 posterior intercostal arteries. And mainly these arteries are coming from, of course, the descendant thoracic aorta. Yes, so we're talking about the third to the eleventh posterior intercostal arteries coming out as branches of descending thoracic aorta. So how about the first two posterior intercostal arteries? Where are they coming from? I told you that they will be coming from this costal cervical trunk. So there will be a branch from this costal cervical trunk, which this time around we call it the highest. Okay, the first two posterior intercostal the, high, the higher region. So we call it the highest. Or some people can also say supreme, or some people can say superior. Okay, intercostal artery. So I want you to appreciate that one. So I'm talking about highest or supreme, or even superior intercostal artery. And whenever you talk about superior or the highest or the supreme intercostal artery, what I want you to become aware is that they are going to supply the first two posterior intercostal space okay i want you to appreciate that all right good now having seen that then how about the d so the first second part is given just a branch and that's the actual posterior cervical trunk no deal the first part gave us three branches now how about that third i mean part of the subclavian artery the third part of the subclavian artery is giving us also just a branch and my friends that branch Okay, let me see. That branch is the one I told you that it will be running along the dorsal aspect of the medial border of the scapula. Dorsal aspect of the medial border of the scapula. So the name is D, dorsal. So it means we call it dorsal scapular artery. The name is dorsal scapular artery. Now, that is where I'm sure some of you are confused, but I'm going to, you know, clear that one for you. Now, the name is dorsal scapular artery. Already, we said that from the first part of the subclavian artery, the T branch, okay, by way of the transverse cervical artery, we said that this transverse cervical artery will give off a special branch and a D branch. And I told you, the D is D. It's also called dorsal scapular artery. This is where there's that kind of confusion. So I want you to become aware of this, that sometimes this third part of the subclavian artery doesn't give off any branch. It doesn't give off any branch. That is in situations where this transverse cervical artery gives the superficial and then the deep branches. It doesn't give off any branch because already that deep branch by the dorsal scapular artery has already been given. It doesn't give off the branch. These are the things I talk about, anatomic variations. But in situations where this artery is there, okay, coming out from the third part of the subclavian artery, or sometimes too, this third part, subclavian, this third part of the subclavian artery doesn't give off a branch. Even the same D branch, the last branch, the dorsal scapular artery, will be coming as a branch from the second part. Pay attention, these are the anatomic variations we are talking about. It can also even come so that even the second part is giving us two branches. So that the third part doesn't give off any branch. That one is also possible. In such a situation, whichever way, whether the dorsal scapular artery is coming, yes, from the usual side, the third part of the subclavian artery, no problem, or it is coming from the second part of the subclavian artery, whichever way, if that happens, then this transverse cervical artery will not give off this deep branch, where is the dorsal scapula, it will not give it. Yes. 
for that reason, it is going to be just one branch. That's why I will not come out of it. So it will continue. For this reason, the name will change to become superficial cervical artery. Yes, I'm sure there's this. I want you to understand that whenever this dorsal scapular artery, which we are saying that it's also called a deep branch of transverse cervical artery, if it comes out as a branch itself from either the third part or even the second part of the subclavian artery, then this transverse cervical artery will no longer be divided into superficial and deep branch. It will continue as one singleton, doesn't divide again. And that singleton will be called superficial cervical artery. It's as simple as that. So I want you to appreciate that. So that sometimes in your reading, you will not see transverse cervical artery. You will see superficial cervical artery. That means that this dorsal scapular artery was indeed given in either the third part or sometimes the second part of the subclavian artery. So my friends, these are the important bits of information which I want you to know regarding this you know, subclavian artery. Now having looked at that, we want to quickly you know, kill some aspects so that the next time we meet, we can quickly run through some other important neurovascular structures. So the next thing that we want to talk about is talk about the continuation of this we want to talk about the continuation of the subclavian artery beyond the outer border of the first rib so the name will change and this time it's closer to the armpit region the axillary region that is why this artery will be called the axillary axillary artery axillary artery i want you to appreciate that axillary artery so where does this axillary artery commence it commences at a level okay beyond the outer border of the first rib okay so it's the same artery but because of destination the name has changed <laughs> nothing really has happened okay so i want you to appreciate that one but my friend where is it going to end it's going to end in a muscle, okay, below this kind of other region. That muscle, okay, is one of the major muscles which actually we insert in the middle border of the biceptal groove, okay, when you look at the humerus. And my friends, that muscle, if I want to put that one over here for you, that muscle is called, uh, sorry, it's called teres major. Teres major. But precisely which portion of the teres major are you talking about? Is it at the upper border or the lower border, my friends? It comes, this muscle comes downwards to so the lower border of the teres major muscle. I want you to appreciate that. That the extent will be from the outer border of the first rib to the lower border of what you call the teres major mass. Good. Now, having seen this, this one too, this artery, is also having three divisions, okay? Also with the help of a muscle. Now, in the lipid, there's one bony prominence, let me say it's around over here, let me, let me choose this area, and my friends, this bony prominence gives point of insertion It gives a point of insertion to one of the muscles and this muscle when i take away the muscle that forms the bed of the breast which we call it petrized major muscle deep to it we find that muscle which will be originating from the third fourth and then the fifth ribs the outer surface or the external surfaces okay that muscle oh all right then it will go upwards this way now let me show you the bone i was trying to show it's coming all the way to insert over here and my friends, you know this bony prominence, the scapula, we call it the coracoid process. So the name of that bony prominence, this guy over here, is something we are called coracoid process. It's shaped like the beak of a crew. Coracoid process of the scapula. Okay, 
So that is, I mean, one thing I want you to become aware of. Grapoid process of the scapula. And my friends, this muscle is something you call pectoralis minor. This is the minor. When I take away the major deep to it, I have this muscle, which we are calling it pectoralis minor. So with the fibers over here, the muscle that we find over here is the pectoralis minor muscle. So, in the case of the subclavian artery, the muscle we mentioned, which was dividing the artery into, into I mean, three parts, was the scalenos anterior muscle. In this case of the azari artery, my friends, it is what we call the pectoralis minor muscle. I want you to become aware of that. And so, for this reason, this artery also gets three divisions. We have the proximal part, which is from the outer border of the first rib to of course, the medial border of this pectoralis minor. Then we have that portion which is deep to the pectoralis minor muscle. Okay, so this portion which is deep to the pectoralis minor muscle and that becomes from the outer border to the medial border of the pectoralis minor muscle. And then beyond, from the outer border of pectoralis minor muscle all the way to the lower border of the, of the teres major muscle, we have what we call the third part of the axillary artery. So now, to make it simple, always there will be mnemonics to help us make some of our life, you know, a bit easy for us. And the mnemonic I want you to know about is something called Hotel Spa. Hotel Spa. It's as simple as that. So I want you to know about Hotel Spa. Let me put it over here. Let me. Uh, hotel. Okay, Hotel Spa. S P A. Hotel Spa. Okay, so the first part of the Azari Archie just gives us just a branch. Yes, I want you to know about that one. The first part of the Azari Archie gives us a branch. And which branch are we talking about? Okay, so to give us a branch over here from the first part. Okay, let me see. There's a branch over here. And my friends, this one is known as the highest thoracic artery. Now, remember it's H. Highest thoracic artery. Now, when it's highest, we can also say supreme. Okay? But something we can also call superior thoracic artery. So, let's put this one over here. H is highest. Okay, so that's the RH that we find right here. That's the highest. Thoracic artery, highest thoracic artery. Now, if you've seen it, the reason why I've written the O in small letter is that it doesn't, I guess, it's not really going to give us anything. Now, the second part of the Azari artery will give us two branches. So, first part, one branch, second part is giving us two branches. So, what are these two branches we are talking about? Now, the T over here. Is something we call it thoracoacromial. Thoracoacromial. Trunk. Thoracoacromial trunk. Or acromial thoracic trunk. Thoracoacromial trunk. I want you to appreciate that. Thoracoacromial trunk. Now, this thoracoacromial trunk, okay, so from here, from the second part, say so it comes over here. It's a trunk, it's a short one. So let me call it that is my T. Turaco acromial trunk. Highest. I'm talking about that T. Turaco acromial trunk. Now, something I've told you already that whenever there's a trunk, there are important branches it gives. And my friends, this time around, this trunk gives us four branches. And it's something very simple, which you can remember. The mnemonic for the branches coming from, of course, this tracheoacromial trunk is APCD branches. You know, when you are at the primary school, you were reciting this ABCD. Now, this one is not ABCD. We are talking about APCD. APCD. You change it if you want it to come APCD. So, it will give us APCD branches.
okay so let's say a p c d branches so a p c d branches they are what we call let me put it over here a p c d branches a p c d and a is acromial branch or acromial artery there will be an acromial branch and acromial okay you know whenever we talk about acromial then we are talking about the highest point okay i want you to become aware what, you know i'm someone who is acrophobic i fear height so the highest point on this i mean scapula is the acromial so there will be a branch which goes to this highest point on it which we call the acromial branch okay acromial branch so let's say this one is a acromial branch let's call it a and then there's a p now p is for pectoral p is pectoral branch p is pectoral pectoral branch now anything pectoral has to do with the chest wall over here pectoral branch so there will be a branch let's call this one pectoral branch okay so a p and then we are talking about c now c is for clavicle now this is our clavicle so it will give off a clavicular branch so we have that clavicle over here and i told you about d now d is nothing there's a muscle which of course usually intramuscular injections are given in here this is your deltoid muscle and for this reason your d is going to be your deltoid branch d is nothing but our deltoid branch so I've said clavicular, and deltoid branch. Okay, that is one thing that you have to become aware of. So it's as simple as that. I want you to appreciate it. A, P, C, D branches coming from the thoracic acromial trunk. Thoracic acromial trunk. Now, having looked at that, the second part also gives off a branch. We said the second part is giving us two branches. We've seen trapper and trunk. Then there's a one more branch which runs along. Okay, so for instance, it's coming from here. It runs along the lateral border of the pectoralis minor muscle. And my friends, this muscle, because it runs along the lateral border, they call it, yes, in the thoracic region. We call it lateral pectoral because it's running lateral to this pectoralis minor muscle. So the nomenclature is so simple: lateral pectoral artery. So the name L over here is nothing but the lateral pectoral artery. Lateral pectoral artery. Lateral pectoral artery. I want you to appreciate that lateral pectoral artery. Okay. Then of course, now one thing that you have to become aware. Now let me just this lateral pectoral artery he has always run along, but the actual name is actually lateral thoracic. It's the thoracic, so let's make it lateral thoracic artery. Thoracic. Of course, it's run along the lateral border, so we call it lateral thoracic. Okay, in the thoracic range, lateral thoracic artery. Now one thing I want you to become aware is that this lateral thoracic artery. Okay, it has some kind of similarities regarding, for instance, the internal thoracic artery. That one went in. We also call it internal mammary artery. That is why this lateral thoracic artery may also be called external mammary artery. External mammary artery. Okay, lateral thoracic artery. Okay, one part. Because remember that the internal thoracic artery, the reason why we call it internal mammary artery is that importantly, in the second to the fourth intercostal space, it will give us something we call perforating mammary branches to the breast. So this one is run along the lateral aspect of the mammary gland, so lateral thoracic or lateral or external mammary artery. I want you to appreciate that. Now, having seen that, the third part gives us three branches. Who? So first part, a branch. Second part, two branches. Third part, three branches. And my friends, these three branches is so simple for us to appreciate the S over here is the subscapula now take think about the scapula okay being around over here scapula and then the humerus around here scapula humerus around here now in our next video whenever i am going to draw to explain to you the i mean shoulder intermuscular spaces i'll bring in that concept i'll draw it to show you but for now just think about the scapula being over here and then the humerus
So what we are saying is that there will be that kind of artery. Let me call it this way. Let me do it this way. Assuming I have the humerus. Uh, let me just make it as such. I have the humerus over here. Now, along the surgical neck of the humerus, I'm interested in the surgical neck. Let me make it even nicer. Now, what we will see is that there will be an artery which winds, okay, so we're going this way, running in something we call the, I mean, the quadrangular space, it runs over there, going posteriorly. And then there's one more artery which runs in front. Of this side, still coming from, of course, this third part of the axillary artery. So, one of them this way, another one this way, and then there's one more regarding the scapula. Okay, regarding the scapula, it runs along what we call the lateral border of the scapula, running downwards. Okay, running downwards. So, in such a manner, let me put it this way in a manner like this along the lateral border of the scapula. So my friends, these are the three branches I want you to know. The first is S. The S I have over here is the subscapular artery. Subscapular, as if it's going downwards towards the subscapular fissa. We call it subscapular artery. Subscapular artery. Now my friends, one thing about the subscapular artery is that it gives off, you know, some kind of branch. It gives off a branch. Let me let me just show you something. I'm saying that the subscapular artery is running along, there's a lateral border of the scapula, running along the lateral border of the scapula. Now, as it comes down, it gives off a branch, which winds in here, okay? It winds around this lateral border of the scapula, around the circumference. So that is why this artery will be called circumflex scapular artery. So, one thing I want you to know is that this subscapular artery will give off a branch, okay? So, let's say it will give off a branch, like this. Okay, let me just put it this way. It will give off two main branches. I want you to appreciate that. One of them is over here. Let me call it C. So the C is something called circumflex. Scapular artery. Circumflex scapular artery. And then there's one more branch. We go downwards. It will be supplies, I mean, serratus anterior muscle. You know, the latest small dorsi. So if, if you know about the nerve to latissimus dorsi, to be called tracodorsal nerve, then that nerve runs with this one. Okay, so for this reason, this artery over here, which is the continuation of the subscapular artery, as given as the circumflex scapular artery, will be called the tracodorsal artery. This artery, which I'm calling T, okay, is called tracodorsal. Thoracodorsal artery. So in the thoracic region, but going backwards, so dorsal, thoracodorsal artery. I want you to appreciate that. Now the P is the one I have over here. It goes backwards, so posteriorly, on the surgical neck of the humerus. So let me call this one P. And my friends, this P is nothing but posterior. It's also moving around the posterior aspect of the surgical neck of the humerus. So we call it posterior second place. Posterior. Circumflex, humeral artery. So it's around the humerus, not the scapula. The one which was winding around the scapula, we call it circumflex scapular artery. This one is winding around the cervical neck of the humerus at the posterior aspect. So we call it posterior circumflex humeral artery. The same way, one is running in front. That's the A I have over here. So we're running anterior. So we call it anterior circumflex humeral artery. Yes, so anterior circumflex humeral artery. Okay, so these are the things that I want you to become aware of. Now, for you to understand so many things regarding, for instance, 
scapula rich anastomosis arterial anastomosis you need to understand all these branches that i've just discussed so i believe that you found this meeting helpful and then of course in our next meeting we are going to delve into other important neurovasculature i'm very grateful for your time this evening have a good night all of you and may the good lord richly bless you amen